many brands of commuter scooters less than $1,000? Which one do you choose? Do you pick something that's been around for a while like the Segway Max or try something that's new and upcoming that may perform better than something that's been around for a while? There's certain criteria that I feel that you need to have and I think the KQI3 Max from new meets that criteria. First, you gotta make sure the company's gonna be around for the after sales stuff in case you got a problem. New launched in 2014 has two million riders globally seven international design awards and is listed on NASDAQ. I think it's safe to say that they're not going anywhere. The second thing I look for is innovation and New is doing that. They have patented industry leading technology in lithium batteries, which basically makes them safer, more reliable and long lasting. And third, make sure you like the look of it. The more you like your toys, the more you're gonna ride them. So let's dive in and see how the Max performs starting with the speed test. Speed can be a deal breaker for me. It's gotta hit at least 18 miles per hour, and I think I should get that with a speed rating of 23. Speed mode one is nine on the app and nine on the scooter. Speed mode two is 18 on the app and 20 on the scooter. The scooter shows two miles faster than the app. Now in the app, in the settings, if you go to custom mode, you can change the top speed. You can lower it down to four kilometers per hour up to 38. And on that mode, the app showing 19 and the scooter 21. 19 miles per hour is a fast speed for a commuter scooter. That tops the high boy, the Segway Max, a lot of big players only hit about 17 to 18. to weight ratio of the Max is pretty impressive. It's got a 450 watt motor that peaks at 900 watts and a lightweight frame of 46 pounds that can carry up to 265 pounds. Now that should give a poppy acceleration for my 185 pound frame. In the app, you can change from a zero to a non-zero start. For this test, I do have it set to a zero start. The acceleration was constant and smooth. There was no part where I felt the power kick in. It was the same from start to finish and took me about a block and a half to top out. Now I wanna show you how reactive and sensitive the throttle is. So from a standstill, as soon as I hit it, power comes right on. And then going around 13 miles an hour, if I release it, power cuts off. If I re-engage, power comes right back on. And then if you hold the throttle down for about nine seconds, you'll hear a beep and that engages the cruise control. And you can turn that off in the app. I've never taken a single motor scooter up a 50% grade hill, but with a hill rating of 25%, I think I should be just fine. This is a two block long, 50% grade hill. I'm in the highest speed mode. I've got a full charge on the scooter and it is already slowing down pretty good. Not even registering on my speed app. That's about it. <laughs> All right, I uh, didn't quite make it. I think New got a little excited when it came to their hill rating. I think for my size, I could probably tackle around an eight to 10% grade. Another thing I like to see on commuter scooters is regen braking, which the Max has, along with dual disc brakes. In the settings in the app, you can change the regen brakes from weak, medium to strong. Top of the scooter out, if I release it, oh, that's actually a nice gradual slowdown. That is not jarring at all. And look at that, no brakes were used. And I stopped, oh, geez, probably within like 30 feet. So I really like the regen brakes, that is nice and smooth. As far as the levers go, the right side controls the front brake, the left side, the rear brakes, so just keep that in mind. If you're living in the States, that's opposite of what you'll be used to. And then when you hit the levers, the tail light does flare up, just like a car. You do have motor cutoff on both levers, so got the throttle going. If I hit the brake, it trumps the motor. As soon as I release, power kicks back on. And then for some light braking, nice and smooth. So I did feel those regen brakes kick on after about a second and a half. And now hard braking at 19 miles an hour, three, two, one. Tires didn't skid, stopped within about 25 feet. I give the brakes a 10 out of 10. They are powerful and smooth and took me 25 feet to stop from 19 miles per hour. Range is the last test I'm gonna do, and honestly is the most important thing I look for in a commuter scooter. Now I got a full charge, which takes eight hours to do so. And for this first test, I'm gonna go 20 miles per hour without a lot of stop and go. Okay, 
Okay, that wraps up range test one. Now, it was cold riding. The temperature was 30 degrees. That's the coldest I've ever been while riding. Not very fun, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, my app recorded 18.87 miles with 586 feet of elevation gain. I stopped about a half a dozen times and I was averaging 21 miles per hour up until the battery hit about 40% when that top speed dropped down to 20 and then stayed at 20 until the battery hit 20% and then the top speed went down to 19 and that's where I held until the scooter died. So you do lose two miles per hour from a full charge to a low charge. I'm gonna charge it back up, do range test number two, this time with a lot more stop and go. This test was more indicative of city driving, hard braking, hard starting. My app recorded 13.70 miles with 655 feet of elevation gain, so about 100 feet more than the first test, and I got five miles less. So with a lot more stop and go, you do lose a few miles, but now you know what it can do for consistent trail riding and for city commuting. Let's talk about specs, features, things like that. First off, it does fold. There's a lever here, collapses it down connects to the back of the scooter. It will click in, you know it's locked in, and then you can just carry it by the stem. There's a push button in the back that you have to hold down to release it. Now, as far as geometry, most of you guys know I'm 5'11". It does position you in the center of the scooter, so you got nice balance. Hi guys, I got no complaints with the balance. Going 20 miles an hour, can easily take my hand off the handlebar scooter. It is wobbling a little bit. This is a rough section of road, but even at that, I still feel very much in control. Standing straight up, my arm is fully extended to grab the grips, and so if you were a little bit taller than me, you'd have to lean over a little bit. I'm not sure what the rider size rating is, but I'd guess I would say around 6'3", 6'4", down to around 5'3", 5'4". As far as the overall comfort and ride, I really like it. It's smooth, feels solid. There's nothing rattling or shaking. As far as the cockpit goes, there's 21 inch length handlebars. They are about four inches wider than my shoulders. And so you're kind of grabbing out at an angle. You have some good airflow underneath and also gives you nice stability and handling. Handle's actually pretty good. It's a lightweight scooter. So you, I mean, you can rip around a corner and then coming off this curb into the grass. Oh yeah. Silky smooth and fun. I put over 40 miles on this and haven't had any stem wobble. That locking mechanism keeps that nice and secure. It is angled back towards the rear of the scooter. There's a decent amount of room here. I wish there was a little bit more room, but I like the height of the stem. Got a nice large deck. It's 22.4 by 6.3 inches. I've got size 10 and a half shoes. They go up in the front about four inches, in the back about a couple inches. You don't need a super huge deck for a commuter scooter. I think that's a good size. And I just like the way the deck is formed. Below the deck, there's 9.5 inch air filled self healing tires. The tires act as your suspension because there's no suspension built into the scooter, which does an okay job. This is a rough chip sill road. My eyes are vibrating a little bit. For bigger bumps, like these cracks in the road here that they fill with tar, the scooter handles those really well. It's just those smaller vibrations that it struggles a little bit. Got a small section of sidewalk, barely can fill those lines. So if you're looking for a commuter, a city commuter, like you'd be okay with something like this. As far as the LCD screen goes, there's just a power button. Hold it down for a couple seconds. Press once to change the speed mode. Double tap to turn on the lights. That's my favorite headlight for a commuter scooter. You know it's a new scooter when you see that coming down the road. If you triple tap it, it changes units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. And then on the left, there's a flick bell. The Max has an IP54 waterproof rating, a two-year warranty, and free shipping in the lower 48. So does it have everything that you need in a commuter scooter? I gotta say 50-50. It has a fast speed, it's smooth and comfortable. I do wish there was a little bit longer distance for trail riding, and of course more power for hills. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good commuter scooter. Let me know what you think in the comments. Appreciate you guys hopping on here and checking out my content, and I'll see you next time.